Okay, so we're gonna play around with volume, shadow copy service, and backups. So what I've done is created two or three partitions on my second disk, and they're each 10 gigs in size. The data partition, the VSS partition, I set the allocation unit size to be 16K, and then on the backup drive, we just did a quick format. So we have three partitions. Now we're going to enable volume shadow copy on the E. So we're going to go properties of the E drive. And on this volume, we're going to click the shadow copies. And we are going to click settings. We are going to locate the shadow copies on the F drive. And maximum size. So you can actually store multiple volumes can have their shadow copy stored on this volume because we limit it to this size. Um, so here we can set the size. We'll leave it at 999 megabytes, so that's one gig. But you could, if you have potentially 10 gigs of data, we could change this to 9 gigs so that way all of our data essentially will have a, a long history of, of <coughs> time that we can go back in time to schedule by default it's set to do twice a day there's two of them so one at 7 a.m. and one at 12 p.m. that's for this lab let's try to do it daily Let's repeat the task every, <laughs> yeah, let's go 10 minutes. Yeah, don't you have to change the duration? They'll only do it for an hour. And for the next, th yeah, let's go for the next three hours. <coughs> advanced scheduling options. Every 10 minutes from 7 a.m. for three hours every day. Uh, we need to change that start time to, let's start it at 9 a.m. Because right now it's 8.53 a.m. so that way it'll start up again in seven minutes and we should have some, some practice data on there to, to play with. So the second one, we can delete if you want to. So now we only have one in there. Now, is this realistic? No, this is just for the lab that we're doing here. But again, Microsoft recommends not to do this more than once per hour is the, the, the lowest frequency. And obviously, the more data you have changing, the more processing power this is going to take. So you got to, again, take a look at your environment, see how often the data changes and how often you need to do this. Honestly, I think twice a day, is plenty. Do it right before people show up to work and do it halfway through the day. So if they come to you and say, oh, I messed something up at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and go, okay, let's go back to what happened at noon or, or go back to this morning. And honestly, they are grateful if you can restore something from yesterday if they really mess something up. I mean, so twice a day I think is plenty. Is it okay? And I think we're good. Hit okay. And then we want to... I think it automatically enables it once you uh, set that schedule with those settings. So we're good. Hit OK. Now let's create some data. I have no clue what you just did. I was trying to get my stuff done here and you got it. Okay, so I'm going to now create my sample data on the E drive. I'm going to create three folders. called home. This is where the home folders are going to be located for users. And I create another folder called software. <coughs> Excuse me. And another folder called scratch. Kind of just a place where people can dump files temporarily to the storm on the network. So in here I'm going to create a rich text document. Open it up. 
name in it and save it. And we'll call this Aaron.textfile. And then I'm going to create another new just plain text document. Okay, so it's 9 a.m. right now. I should be getting a copy of some of this, some of these files. So it's going to occur again in another 10 minutes. So I'm going to go to another folder here. We'll wait till 9.01 and we'll create some folders and files inside of the software folder. Should so there we'll be something see. on the VSS drive now? No, the VSS volume is only used to store the the shadows of the files. Right. Not the files themselves. So shouldn't there be something in that folder right now? Or at 901? Oh, I don't know. Probably at 901 we should have something in there. And that's only if we have created those files and folders prior to prior 9 a.m. Ah. Yep. So now it's after 9 o'clock. It's going to run again another 10 minutes. So I'm going to create a few more folders just so I have some other sample stuff to work with. Um, we'll call this AP. I don't know what the heck that is, but it's something. And we'll call this Office. And we need to copy some files in there. So let's explore the C drive. Windows and let's copy some files out of here. Um, help. Let's go to the Windows folder, English, and here's some help files. So let's just grab a couple help files. So I'm on the C Windows Help Windows US folder. I'll go back to the E drive software and dump these help files inside of the ABP folder. So we just want some sample data that we can see what's going to be copying over there. So this isn't a requirement, but I like to see exactly what is located on my drive. So I go to Tools, Folder Options, and then under View, I uncheck High Protected Files say yes, and I make sure I also have checked the show hidden files and folders. Hit OK. All right, so now we want to see what kind of uh, data was backed up through the hidden, through the volume shadow copy service. So we're going to right click on the data folder, I'm sorry, the data volume, and we're going to select restore previous versions. And here we have the previous versions, and it shows uh, today at 9 a.m. It has a copy of the data that was there at that time. Well, we don't want to restore the entire volume or anything. We want to just open it and let's take a look at what's in there. So hit the open button. And in here we see the location. It's localhost E dollar sign, so it's a hidden, and then at, and then it shows the time of, of day. And if we take a look at the scratch folder, this is where we created that um, text document with the name in it, and we renamed it to my first name, and then we also created another file, which isn't there because we created it after the 9 a.m. cutoff. So let's take a look inside of this file. There's my Aaron Halverson, so the data is in there, but it's not renamed to the original name Aaron, is what I actually named it after the 9 o'clock time. So we can see that we can restore this file. So if we want to restore it, I guess we can just right click, copy it, and we can manually put it in there. Or we could go back to the E drive and let's click the restore. So this window is still open, the data partition is open when I clicked on the E down at the bottom here. I can hit the restore button and it says, sure you want to restore the previous version of data from seven minutes ago. This replaced the current version of this folder on your computer. So this is the entire E drive. So would it erase what we currently have there and then 
yes, it would currently erase it. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to give it a shot just to see exactly what happens and show you what does happen. So we have restore. Fuller's been restored successfully to his previous version. I hit OK on this. And now I go to my E drive. And I go into my scratch folder. And what it did is it put the files back that it didn't have there before. Hmm. So it didn't erase it. Yeah, so it didn't erase everything. ABP still has stuff. So it just restored the files that are different. I wonder if it would have made a copy of Aaron, if it would have put an Aaron 1 after it, possibly. We'll find out in two minutes. We'll find out, yeah, in a couple of minutes we'll find out. So, go to back to the scratch folder. So we have Aaron, rich text, and test. So, essentially, what you could do is, if your data drive totally failed, you'd be able to put it back, on, put it back, everything back. Yep, you could put everything back to a certain time of the day. And then you would just so that way you don't have to go back to your backups. And then if somebody accidentally deleted something, you just you could find, find yeah, the file. You, find yeah, the you could actually go and find the file, copy it, and then put it back in their folder. So instead of doing the whole volume. It's going to happen in five seconds. Okay, so it should be making the volume shadow backup. Now we can take a look at it. Go to the E drive, restore previous versions. And we should have two of them in there one done at 9 a.m., one done at so I'm going to explore the one done at 9.10, and it should have the information and software that we didn't have before. Very good. And we should also have the information that's stored in the scratch drive or scratch folder. There they all three are, and this one should have the restored information in it. Yep, restored file. So it's up to date. That's volume shadow copy. Pretty cool. It's a nice useful tool. It's very nice. So how come it wouldn't show 